Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Elizabeth Guerin for What's Up Caribbean. Congresswoman Val Demings, Florida Senate candidate, recently met with some Haitian personalities in Little Haiti. She held a press conference. Then I had the opportunity to sit with her for a one-on-one -on -one interview that you will see tonight. We'll be right back. I came today to tell you that I am committed to working with you for a better America and thereby a better Haiti. And I want to thank the community leaders who are standing with me. I want to thank the press who are with us, the media who are with us today to help us get our story out. My concern is the influence of the U.S. in the political uh, arena in Haiti. Uh, U.S., uh, what you call core group, supported uh, bad leaders. Uh, they're still supporting bad leaders in Haiti now. You've seen what happened with Daniel Foote, uh, and uh, now Merton is back. So it's a package, what you've seen at Del Rio and Ciudad Acuna. That's it's the package that U.S. get involved by influencing bad people in Haiti. You're talking to a former police chief, <laughs> and let me say this. Um, you know, the former envoy, uh, Mr. Foote, I think in his congressional testimony recently, really kind of laid it out. There were no holes barred in his testimony. And that is exactly one of the things that he so clearly questioned um, was the U.S. The, uh, the U.S. supporting corrupt leaders. As announced, here is my interview with Congresswoman Val Demings. First of all, let me start by saying that I'm very honored to have you with me for this interview. I'm Welcome. honored to be with you. <laughs> Welcome to Island TV. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. First of all, you had a wonderful interview or roundtable with our Haitian leaders. Do you have a comment? Well, I am very excited about running for the United States Senate. I do believe that uh, Florida deserves a senator that wants to represent all people and all communities. And if I'm going to be the best U.S. Senator that I can be, then I've got to travel the state and talk to different communities about things that matter to them. And so today we talked about the uh, issues that uh, people are facing in Haiti and America's response to those issues. And it was just a great roundtable discussion Uh, I learned some things, and I think they learned some things about me and my commitment to getting it right as a nation. What have you learned today? That, you know, number one, a lot of, when we look at the turmoil, uh -huh. basically, that is going on in Haiti, we can start back from 2010 with the earthquake, the public health pandemic that they're still struggling with, we're all still struggling with it, the assassination of the Haiti president, and then the earthquake in August that killed over 2,000 people. One of the most profound things I, I learned today was that it's really, although we talked a lot about immigration, that a lot of families in Haiti want to stay in Haiti and work to build a stronger government, a stronger nation, one where they can prosper and live up to their full poten potential one with economic stability. And so that was very, to hear that point reiterated over and over today was really just so uh, powerful. Are you satisfied about the way the Biden administration is handling the crisis in Haiti? Well, if we can go back to the former administration and, you know, I, I just wish that America would once and for all create a comprehensive immigration program, let's pass some laws that really work. And so we looked at the former administration. We know there were multiple errors there. It's interesting 
that immigrants were not really welcome in a nation or to a nation of immigrants. Yeah. But unfortunately, what we've seen is people who are seeking asylum in this country. Our laws say that if you are fleeing from corruption, violence, whatever, then you have the right to apply for asylum in this country. And unfortunately, our response has not really matched up to the laws that support that effort. It depends uh, that effort. on the people, because if you are talking about Norwegians or people that the former administration were praising, some people are welcomed as immigrants, like the, the wife of the former president and many others from other nationalities, like Caucasians. So it's different. It depends well, on you know, where you're looking for. The, yeah, the treatment as a, is different. As a even black for the Cuban communities, even though they are black too, in my book, but... Uh, they had a different uh, response. As a black girl who grew up in the South, who knows what discrimination feels like, who knows what it, it feels like and looks like to be treated differently, I'm on a mission right now. Do you feel it right sure. now at your level? Oh, yeah. You I, feel I, the discrimination? Like as a well, congresswoman, you feel it yourself? There or? are a lot of people, when I walk in a room, what they see first is a black woman. And unfortunately, there are, they formulate in their minds what I'm like before I ever open my mouth and introduce myself. But as a black woman who grew up in the South, in Florida, yeah. I'm on a mission to make sure that people in this country, regardless of who they are, the color of their skin, their ethnic background, how much money they have, are treated with dignity and respect. That is why I can sit here today and talk to you as a member of the U.S. House and Representatives and a candidate for the U.S. Senate because some people along the way in my life got it right and invested in me. And now I feel a direct obligation to do the same thing. Career-wise, what uh, accomplishments are you most proud of? Wow, I mean, I'm the youngest of seven children. My mother was a maid and my father a janitor. Youngest of seven, but the first in my family to go to college and graduate college. Uh, my mother instilled in me to not allow myself to be defined by the discrimination in the world or the negative, ugly things people would say, but to be defined by my ability to work hard and play by the rules. Graduated from college, went on to be a social worker, working with families that needed emergency services and abused and neglected and abandoned children. I joined the Orlando Police Department, still committed to public service and wanted to make life better for people and had the honor of working my way up through the ranks to become Orlando's first woman chief of police. Elected to Congress, elected by the people, which is such an honor that of all of their choices, they chose me to represent them, their interests, but they also put their hopes and dreams in my hands, believing that I can work to make a difference. I was selected as one of seven impeachment managers against in the first impeachment trial against that other guy. And we the congratulate only, you for your leadership. Thank you. We were so, so proud of you. The only non-lawyer to be chosen. And, you know, I was just so proud and honored there. And now running for the United States Senate. Yeah. I think that's the story yeah, that... Reason. That's, that's pretty special. Be proud. That's pretty, yeah. You are also a member of the Black Caucus. I'm a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. When we look at why the Congressional Black Caucus was formed in the early um, 70s, matter of fact, we just celebrated our 50, 50th okay. anniversary. And um, In Haiti, let me tell you, sorry to interrupt you, we don't yeah. have a lot of time, but in Haiti, they always say, they think that uh, no decision can be made in the states without the approval of the Black Caucus. And now we have Kenneth Martin back in Haiti, and he gave us Marty Lee. So they think right now that we're gonna have Marty Lee again because he's a chargé d'affaires back in Haiti. Is that true that the Black Caucus approved Kenneth Martin? They always talk to you before making a decision about Haiti? The Black Caucus is considered the conscience of the Congress. And I think there is no group in Congress that really understands the perspective of people who have been discriminated against, people who have been left out of the conversation, people who did not have a seat at the table. 
And so when we're looking to pass legislation that helps, that deals with civil rights, human rights, voting rights, housing, poverty, mm -hmm. what better group to lead those efforts or to consult in those efforts than the Congressional We are Black very Caucus, happy about it. The it, conscience of the Congress. It's better for us as Haitians, but we are concerned about the fact that they may not have maybe the, the I'm not saying the right information, but mm -hmm. sending Kenneth Martin in Haiti, it's considered as a faux pas. So well, we need to get Haiti right. That's the bottom line. We need to get people who are interested, number one, dealing with those seeking asylum in our country, making sure that, they, look, we're a nation of laws, but we're also a nation of values, right? And so we need to get that right. But also, we need to effectively deal with some of the root causes, some of the problems in Haiti, the corruption, the gang activity, the kidnappings that I understand are at an all-time high. We need to work hard to create an environment where Haiti can thrive, that brings economic stability and where Haiti, the Haitian people can live up to their full potential. And so we've got to work with the Biden administration, the, the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate have got to work with the State Department to make sure that we assign people to Haiti who understands the root causes and really understands that we are a nation of laws, but also a nation of values. You know, I, I think about the interview or the testimony of the former envoy or envoy, Mr. Mr. Foote, who really Foot, yeah. gave out or, or gave a very good perspective of the conditions in Haiti based what on about his Mr. years. Cole? Well, that's <laughs> well, another case, with, yeah. Right, based on his years of experience. And so we need to get it right, but we need to also do what we did, what I did today. Which is? Come and talk to people. To the leaders. To okay. the leaders who understand the various challenges. Many times they don't necessarily have to have titles, right? Mm -hmm. But there are people who have family or people who have the experience of living in Haiti and listen to them and talk to them so we all can get it right. I know you're working on a bill to help minority media. It's something that I've worked on since I've been in Congress pretty much. Yes. And it deals with media diversity because I do think it is important that the, dec the decision makers are diverse, but also those in front of and behind the cameras are diverse. And even from whether it's television or it's some of the smaller newspapers, they bring more than just a story. You and know, they can communicate the much better right. with their own community. Just the facts, ma'am. Nothing but the facts. But perspective matters, right? I can tell my story about being a member of Congress all day long. But when I talk about being a black girl growing up in the South and making it to Congress, I bring perspective to the conversation. Also, when our children and our grandchildren see people on the screen, who look like them. them. Yeah. It opens up a whole world of possibilities for them. So our media must be diverse. This is something we've been dealing with for 53 years in this country. With the Kerner Report, 53 years ago, talked about the influence on the media on how people think and the decisions that they make. We need to make sure that our media is diverse and full of diverse voices and perspectives which is so critical and so, so that important. Bill and we do have successful. bipartisan we do have bipartisan support by the way, That's fantastic. which is a really good thing. So it's something that we've created an advisory board of those in the profession that will come in again listening to people who are in the business. We've talked to journalists who were some of the first black journalists to serve uh, in anchor positions, for example, which they bring a whole different perspective. Their yeah. earlier experiences are important. And so we're excited about the work ahead uh, as we deal with media diversity. That is something that uh, is fantastic for us in the media. And I wish that you will be very successful Thank in this Thank you for field. that. It's important. Now let's talk about Marco Rubio, even though we're not here to promote him. But is it tough to run against Marco Rubio? You know, I take nothing for granted. Right. But l let me just say what I think is a major difference in Marco Rubio and me. My parents taught me to work hard and play by the rules and take nothing for granted or no one for granted. 
So as I travel this state, I'm going to do what I've done as a career law enforcement officer, and that is to talk to people who look like me and who don't look like me about things that matter to them. This is not about my agenda. This is not this sense of entitlement that my opponent has. It is about earning each vote that I get in this race. When people are in trouble, they need elected officials or appointed officials who have their back and will work to make things better for them. I use the public health, uh, the public health pandemic that we all find ourselves in over the last year and a half. Families were struggling to make ends meet. Small businesses were struggling or closing their doors. We were worried about sending our children back to school. Pe people in Florida, families in Florida were hurting. Marco Rubio voted against relief for those families. So if you, I don't support you during a tough time, what would make you think that he's going to support you during good times? I'm not afraid to work on behalf of the people or afraid of a tough fight. Marco Rubio is. He only shows up, and I've heard that as I've traveled the state, that we don't see him. He only shows up when it is politically advantageous to him. I talk a lot about our democracy and how important our democracy is to and then the system, this government of the people that we live in, right? The power is in the hands of the people. We know what happened to us on January 6th when we came this close to losing our democracy. Marco Rubio voted against an independent commission to investigate the attack of January 6th. Look, we can talk about health care. We can talk about lowering the cost of prescription drugs. We can talk about education. We can talk about immigration. We can talk about a housing shortage. We can talk about being a good partner for Haiti and all of the other things, our safety and security. But without our system of democracy, all of those things that we care about are at risk. Our democracy was under attack. Where has Marco Rubio been? I was talking to the group earlier, and they said, why is it that we have people who fail us, but they seem to get elected over and over again? This is about accountability. We have a choice in Florida, and I'm going to travel this state and meet with every community That's really and important. earn the votes of the because people in the state. What you were just saying, a lot of people in our Haitian communities, they don't know that. They don't know that he voted against everything that they need. They needed him to vote for. That's right. So have you been saying it throughout oh, your campaign everywhere? I have been Do saying it. I have been saying it everywhere. And, and the other important thing too, I don't just select audiences that look like me or audiences that I'm comfortable with. I couldn't do that as a police chief. I had to serve every community. Absolutely. Which meant I had to meet with every community. So this is nothing new for me. Let me know when Marco Rubio comes to talk to you or your audience. Did you visit the Cuban community? Oh yes. In Florida, and did they welcome you? I think it must be absolutely difficult for you to campaign in Florida. I, you know what? How is I your take, experience? Tell us about it. I take nothing for granted, but here again, I'm not doing something now that I have not done 
in the past. I didn't shy away from communities as a career law enforcement officer that did not look like me. Since I have been in this race, I've had two very productive roundtable discussions with Cuban Americans, besides the fact that I worked with many of them on the police department. Of course, yeah. And we've talked about this quest for freedom. It kind of goes back to our democracy. It is the most important gift that we have. And as I sit here talking to you, I think we both understand how important our democracy is, how important freedom is. And we've had some good, very productive conversations in Central Florida and in South Florida with the Cuban community. So you have a support, just, you have a strong support from the Cuban community. Could you say that? Or you, you know just what? say I, that? I take no community for granted. And see, I think that's a mistake that we make in politics. Just because I'm an African-American female does not mean I'm not talking to the African-American community. Just because I'm a member of the black community does not mean I'm not talking to the Afro-Caribbean community. But I'm also talking to the Cuban community, the Puerto Rican community, the Venezuelan community, the Colombian community, the Mexican community. I'm not picking and choosing, picking and choosing winners and losers mm -hmm. based on their ethnic background. I am talking to every community about the things that matter to them. And that is exactly how I will win this race. So do you think that the way the Biden administration handled that Haitian crisis will affect your race, could affect your race? I think that we all have an obligation to make sure that we are living up to the laws of the land. For example, blanket deportations, I think, are wrong because the law says that we, can, we will process those who are seeking asylum mm -hmm. in our country. So is there more work to do from the administration? You better believe it. Is there more work to do in the United States Senate? Of course. Is there more work to do in the U.S. House of Representatives? Certainly. If we're going to live up to America's promise, then we've got to do a better job. What is your biggest quality? My experience as a crisis manager. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with a public health pandemic. We're dealing with natural disasters. We're dealing with climate change and climate control. Being able to manage crisis, I did that for 27 years, I think is a primary strength. But my ability, again, to not pick and choose winners and losers based on your ability to play or your ethnic background, I want to serve all the people. And when I get to the U.S. Senate, I will do exactly that.
if you could change something about you, what would it be? Uh, make about 10 of me so that I could be here in South Florida. Oh, I love this. <laughs> in the panhandle, in North oh, Florida, I where I was born, from the panhandle to the Keys. We have 67 counties. Maybe I need 67 of me, but there's only one. But I'm going to do everything within my power to travel this state and earn the respect and the support Everyone. from the voters in Florida. And I have to tell you that the answer you gave me is the best I ever had since I've been asking that question. And the 10 of you, that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's the first time in my career. I love it. But um, what is your hobby? Do you have time to do something else? Well, I have a 2004 <laughs> Harley Davidson Road King Classic. Okay. So my husband and I ride motorcycles. Ooh. And when I... You're in the back or you're riding yourself? Oh, no, no, I have my own now. Oh. No, no, no. I love Let's that. Let's be clear on this. Okay. I have my own. Mine, <laughs> 2004 Harley Davidson Road King Classic wow. in Sierra Red. Okay. And we love to travel the back roads. Matter of fact, in this race, I'm going to take it on the road. And I'm so looking forward uh, to doing that. Um, yeah, that's and my hobby. What is your weakness? I'm sure you're not going to say it, but... Do what you... is my weakness? Yes. Um, you know, when I... I really do worry about our nation, our position in the world. Um, yeah. If we're the leader and the most powerful nation, if you're living in this country, then membership should have its privileges. And you should not be judged by the color of your skin or your ethnic background. You should be judged, as Dr. King said, by the content of your character. And you should have the opportunity to succeed. And when America does not live up to its promise, I worry about that. I work every day in the House of Representatives and on this campaign trail for U.S. Senate to hold America to its promise. I'm sitting here today talking to you as a Senate, as a candidate for the United States Senate because of America's promise. And I want to create that opportunity for every boy and girl and every man and woman living in a country that we say is the greatest country in the world. Before the previous administration, we took a lot for granted. And I think we forgot that the greatness that we enjoy here in this country, it doesn't just happen. If we look historically, there have been men and women of all races whose blood, sweat, and tears helped to build this great nation. Now it is in our hands. The torch has been passed. And we have to continue to work hard to form that more perfect union that we talk about. And so I think the previous administration and the vicious attack on our democracy on January 6th reminded us that, yeah, we are great, but we ha all have an obligation to play to protect that greatness. And you really think it's possible? Is there a lot of other you in yeah, I, the I really Senate, do. other people? I, I really who, do. It is really scary what we are seeing. Right it's now. scary what we are it seeing. Is absolutely scary. But our power. And you said you were worried too. So, yeah, because you know when I was a police chief, when someone was injured in my jurisdiction, I, I took it personally, because my job was to protect and serve. I'm on a mission to save this nation, right? And I really do believe that at the end of the day. There are more good, committed people in this country than not. Sometimes we don't use our voices, though. We, we kind of take the back row and are silent. But there could not be a greater time in our nation or a greater need for people who love this nation and want to see opportunities in this nation for everybody. It's time to use our voices. Uh, someone, I, I once read something where someone said, Use your brain, <laughs> use your voices, and use your feet. Our power yeah. is at the ballot box. Absolutely. So the final question, how will you handle thing, things differently if you replace Marco Rubio 
about the Haitian community. You've said it in your speech and everything, but we want to hear it again. Yeah, How will everybody counts. If we, if we thought about it this way, everybody counts, but everybody's accountable. And I want to hmm, rep like that. represent all people. I go back to Marco Rubio picks winners and losers based on your ability to pay to play. He's more interested in special interests than he is in an individual family in South Florida who may be struggling to keep the doors open of their small business. How would you vote against support to help a small business in Florida keep its doors open? Or a family who's barely holding on to their job to not give them a little bit of financial support to just bridge the gap for them. I will represent all people in Florida and I'm going to travel this state and talk to you and others about things that matter to the community. As I said earlier, it is not my show. It is not my agenda. It is about the people's agenda. Marco Rubio is more interested in his political future. He was in Iowa not too long ago, so maybe he's planning on running for president. I don't know. I'm interested in representing Floridians, and I will do just that. And I will dedicate every day in the United States Senate to serving the people and helping to improve the quality of life for the people that I represent. Now I'm going to ask you for the shorter version. Bullet points. Tell the community directly why they should vote for you. I am Val Demings, running for the United States Senate, born and raised in Florida. Florida is my home state. I served as a social worker, a police chief, and now serving in the U.S. House of Representatives. I want to represent every person in Florida. I am a former crisis manager, and when people are in trouble, it is my responsibility as a United States Senator to improve the quality of life for every family. I will not pick winners and losers based on your ability to pay to play or get involved with special interests. I want to represent you. If you want to work with me, then please visit my website, valdemings.com. I look forward to seeing you on the campaign trail. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And good luck. Stay Thank strong. You. I will. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Thank you. Mesdames et Messieurs, nous avons un représentatif Banou, Marie Woodson, qui est dans le cas de un leader que, en pile, en pile, en pile, en pile, nous avons toujours dit que c'est un leader que vraiment, et quel que soit le monde qui est toujours, ça a l'air même sous les républicains, ça a sous les démocrates, ça a l'air même tout le monde aimait Marie Woodson, je ne dis ça pour faire plaisir, mais c'est vrai, nous avons ça déjà. Alors, Marie Woodson, moi, tu as mes opinions sur l'interview, ça, qu'on s'entendait avec la Congresswoman, non Qui ça qui frappe pour nous, ça le dit well, premièrement, je dis mon cap garde ou yo bonjour et je dis oui, tout bas met un grand merci du fait que je dis encore bonne opportunité pour me paraître, pour me faire parler avec, pour me parler avec mon yo tout au sujet de candidat qu'on souhaite faire interview avec la congresswoman Val Demings qui a pris aller pour chaise en an Sénat pour aller devant Marco Rubio. Uh -huh. So, ça me quoi dans matin depuis matin là là ils font presque conférence ensuite ils font belle interview avec vous vraiment moi son monde qui paraît pour la dans chaise là dans chaise sénat parce que il était commencé travail il comme social worker il était chief police dans dans Orlando côté lié ensuite il est allé dans house of representatives vous comprenez là dans congrès États-Unis mais non seulement ça son monde pendant que là qui toujours représenter tout le monde vraiment. Il pas représenté un groupe monde et puis il pas représenté l'autre groupe yo. So il était touché en pile sur ça nous t'ai parlé des affaires qui a passé en Haïti. Mm -hmm. Mais comme on connaît en politique, l'or en politique c'est pas voir par là seulement qui comptait. Vous comprenez le combat important qu'on s'a discuté au sujet quand que nous même pays d'Haïti qui gagne combien de temps depuis n'a passé la dernière. So il y a tellement de en pile question et il t'ai répondre question vraiment bien répondu now qu'on est là n'a pas ou comprendre le l'aller en vraiment qui gens la pour le travail avec nous mais confident 
que l'elle y aller vraiment que la travail sous série de base qui est très important encore m'a dit que grand pile bagaille parfois nous pas comprendre ou besoin plus voix pour ça. passer en bagaille parce que moi-même dans situation en tala si qu'on y a le que coup on bagaille qui est important pour vous qu'on t'avait passer bon parce qu'on pas je ne supporte tout le monde là donné ou qu'a pas qu'à faire même connaît Jean le parler que que la fait la pas le travail vraiment alors il parle il frappe du sous ma coup bio il dit des bagages extrêmement graves est-ce que ou capable ou dit en créole sorti tandis que le dit sous ma coup bio well il vraiment il dit que pas de comparaison entre lui-même avec ma coup bio l'op gardant monde vraiment qui n'a en chaise qui travaille pour tout le monde Marco, c'est non, 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 comment dire ça? L'un groupe seulement que l'était. Et c'est le seulement qu'on avantage pour lui. Le qu'on avantage pour lui, lui présenter. Et le Marco dit oui, pas quoi oui ça, son oui qui tout bon. Marco dit ça aujourd'hui, hein? Demain le baron l'autre parole. Demain le baron parole, après demain le baron l'autre parole. Lui même lui là, s'il dit oui, c'est oui. Ensuite l'heure commence à marcher, les marche avec tout le monde, les représente ni noir ni ni caribéen, ni pangol, ni blanc, ni tout le monde. Les représente tout le monde, les pas faire passe pour qui Donc groupe et puis pour pas servir l'autre groupe là. Ensuite grand pile position que le prend au sein de ça qui passé either en Haïti ou bien ici, ma copa prend position ça ma copa prend opposé. Alors c'est ça qui est important c'est que grand pile monde qui peut-être pas connaît mm -hmm. qui ça que Marco Rubio mm -hmm. et voter contre mm -hmm. qui mm -hmm. pas dans intérêt haïtien mm -hmm. est-ce qu'on capable mm -hmm. dire nous Marco Rubio voter contre un pile bagage qui pas dans intérêt haïtien premièrement le n'a pas regarder situation ba TPS tout ba c'est qui a passé pour haïtien Marco Rubio voter contre ba ça ensuite le bon bagage qui vient devant qui pour impact fait impact en Haïti il voter contre lui même genre tout bagaille que nous avons passé dans le pays d'Haïti qu'on y a là ma covid ou pas voter pour un rien là pour même genre nous des sentis dit que pour yo pour yo prendre sanction contre haïtien pour yo pas venir ici ensuite la prendre sanction contre organisation Biden qui a supporté migrants qui a venir dans le pays là les contre ça ces position ça que ma covid ou prend tout même position ça que on prend parce que ma covid pas représenter haïtien vraiment il pas là pour aider haïtien et nous même Yo gon bagay le yo besoin vote yo vinn nan communauté haïtienne nan vinn mande nou vote et républicain au fond nan ça spécialement ma Kobio la vini gè de fa yo pran l'argent yo mete nan communauté a pou fè moun panse que y avèr et puis le yale nan en position yo vote contre tout bagay ki te ka bon pou haïtien c'est ça qui est important c'est ça le n'a fait décision pour nous voter pour moun pour nous connait pour qui est-ce que yo pa voter now même là nous dit OK démocrate pas parfait pas une personne qui parfait me comprendre ça très bien mm -hmm. mais opposé à puis mal alternative là puis mal en pile parce que si nous ta aller de côté à, à, avec Marco Rubio que nous pas aller avec Valdemeng Valdemeng montre que le bon cœur humain que le cachita vraiment pas écouter ça qui passé qui dit en Haïti qui dit ici même le conseil de bagaille c'est nous même qui pour aller chita pour nous discuter avec eux parce que comme les deux jours dire les pas compte toute bagaille vraiment nous pas qu'expect pour le compte toute bagaille mais depuis nous chita nous pas la veille at least ça comprendre et puis la mettre nous à foi quand qu'on américain dit
Alors, facteur humain, ça, qui l'a caillou, moi, Rémel, et c'est-à-dire qu'avec ou même Marie, nous avons l'impression que politique là, pas faut oublier le monde qui est. Parce qu'en tant que politicien, moi, je connais plus le monde, qui mm -hmm. même démocrate, tout, qui mm -hmm. pas voulu officiellement dire que le campé a supporté le monde, mm -hmm. parce que vous pas qu'on est plus devant côté bal la bralé donc il y a pas prendre position moi ouais que dès le début mm -hmm. ou gagne temps prendre position ou dit ou supporter mm -hmm. dame ça est-ce que ça ou pas peur que ça nuit dans carrière politique ou non comme on dit bavet merci beaucoup pour ça dit hein nous sommes monde l'homme dit oui on dit oui à pour tout bon l'homme dit non tout on dit non pour tout bon now l'homme dit non hein? ou ca essayer venir convaincre moi ou ca essayer prouver mon série de bagaille mais depuis me dit que m'a campé avec eux je suis campé vraiment. Et avant de camper, je ne suis pas campé comme ça. Je fais analyse, je garde, je suis D'ailleurs, son dame que je connais en bon temps, même le nous pas trop bons amis avant, même suivre les en pile. Je garde qui j'en li agi avec l'autre groupe. Je garde tout qui j'en le te prendre comme impeachment manager pour pour trial que tu as fait avec Trump qui j'en fait à camper et te ah, oui. délivrer vraiment ça te doit délivrer surtout le monde a fait ça pas ça parce que moi même compte monde qui a fait ça pas ça so si me dit oui m'a camper m'a boire 150% c'est ça parce que hier c'est à la si que moi là ou comprendre Exactement. parce que qu'on est assez dans comité oui que nous m'vo m'prend avion hier soir je viens pour aujourd'hui, demain, si je veux me aller. Je vais aller encore. Donc, so, quand on dit nous, même dans la communauté, mais avec nous, c'est petit, nous mieux, mais avec nous, tout bon. Depuis son bagage, je connais qu'à bénéficier de la communauté, je suis campé d'elle, et c'est pour ça tout que je me dis, je suis campé avec Val, je suis souhaité que nous, tout ait importance pour nous campé avec Val demain, vraiment, pour aller dans le Sénat, pour nous retirer les gens qui pas dans l'intérêt, les gens qui pas vraiment là pour nous, les gens qui font politique avec nous, parce que même l'homme dans la politique, bah fait politique avec moi l'homme dit oui c'est oui l'homme dit non tout c'est non alors Marie dernière question avant qu'il te aller c'est que en pile dans fré action nous yo yo tant c'est le gain élection présidentielle seulement yo voulez à voter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. et yo pas yo pas comprendre importance vote à tout moment qui dernier message va ba yo pas bête ou même son reporter que on, on journaliste vraiment que me respecter parce que me connaît qui est souillé si par exemple ou pas ou tu pensé Val de Meng, pas ton candidat qui était solide, pas qu'on t'a même quitté le vin dans le sud, oui. vin faire interview. Et me supporter le tout. Exactement. Moi ça, moi ça, et m'apprécier ça en pile parce que, ou campé des monde qui a fait bien, ou comprendre mon nom qui a fait bien. Le nom est un bon monde à le voter. Et surtout, à ne ça, qu'on y a la climat qui y a, qu'on y a là. Démocrate pas doué, même le démocrate, nous, ou un bagage qui n'a pas fait bien. Pas dit que nous ne pouvons pas le voter, parce que si nous ne pouvons pas le voter, c'est un vote qui est républicain. Et l'alternative que nous avons, c'est républicain, believe me, ou pas voulons l'autre Trump monter sur le pouvoir encore, yeah. ou pas voulons l'autre Marco Rubio venir encore. Si faire ça, nous sommes capables, depuis nos temps d'élection, exercer le droit de vote. Nous. Parce que son droit en Haïti que nous ne pouvons pas exercer, freely, les gens sont capables. Mm. Parce que vraiment en Haïti, nous avons une série de bagages que nous ne pouvons pas faire, nous pouvons pour pour nous partager. Ici, même le vous mettez quelques petits bails pour empêcher de voter, vous ne pouvez voter quand même. So, année ça, année qui vient l'élection 2022, ça, c'est une élection très très importante. Nous avons une élection qui va venir là. Le 20 euh, novembre qui va venir là, élection district 21, que Alcy Hessing est là-dedans, c'est une élection qui est très très importante. Absolument. Très importante. Donc, so, sortez la caille, nous, à voter, pas tant que l'élection présidentielle seulement. Exercer le droit de vote, nous, parce que son droit, quand il y a des batailles pour nous gagner, c'est exercer le pour nous gagner un bon monde dans l'office pour défendre nous. Le président Woodson, je vous remercie encore une fois que tu as toujours à nous et puis continuez à nous pour nous. Nous nous très bientôt encore dans la TV pour de nouvelles pour nous. Babette, qui est une intime que je parce que nous sommes des gens tellement aimés, des gens qui tellement respecté. Je vous remercie en pile pour ça que vous avez fait pour qu'il y communauté des pour éduquer la communauté des pour faire au qu'on de bagay qui a passé et merci tout que pour travail qu'on fait pour nous parce que là où mettez nous là nous avons chance pour nous parler avec mon nous li bon pour nous li bon pour mon nous bon pour toute communauté noire merci, merci beaucoup merci beaucoup voilà et bien, mesdames et messieurs je pense que nous passons un très bon moment ensemble restez bon chez Swaland TV